okay today we will take uh, a very important topic and that will be of uh, composition of two functions and invertibility so first uh, let me take composition and then i will be take composition of two functions two or more than two also two or more functions Now here, see. Before I take this uh, topic of composition of two or more functions, I would like to tell you one uh, thing. That this uh, comp by composition of two functions, see, we shall be given two functions, uh, but in a restricted manner. that is if one function is from a to b then the other function has to be from b to say c then only it will this concept of composition of function will make sense it is not that arbitrarily you can take any two function and you can find the composition of two functions that in a way happens if uh, over a set there is a binary operation defined over it in operation certainly uh, if a operation is defined over a set then if we take any two arbitrary element of that set then and if we fuse them or combine them by that operation by that binary operation then the resultant should be known to us so point which i am making is that uh, this composition word is different from operation now when and this composition of two function uh, mean that see suppose two functions have been given then we will try to create a newer function from the given two functions the purpose of operation is also the same that is uh, in operations also uh, from given two elements we try to create newer elements but in a composition function c i repeat at the very outset that it is not that arbitrarily you will take any two functions and you can combine them and you can get a newer function no for this functions for composition function to be meaningful what you need to do is that uh, you need to ensure that the range set of the first function that is if f is a first function is f is say defined from a to b then the second function need to be defined from b to c that is to say that the range set of the first function should be same as the domain of the second function then only this composition of two function will make sense so uh, we will take this uh, so once again i repeat that it is different from operation because in operation uh, Uh, you take any two elements of the set on which the binary operation is defined then see you take any two elements of that set and the resultant which is obtained by way of fusing these two elements by the given operation that should be known but here once again i repeat that uh, if you take uh, a set of functions then composition will not composition will not be an operation though the objective is the same that you want to find uh, create uh, newer functions from the given two functions but then i repeat that it has to be in a restricted manner that is to say that if function the composi uh, composition is always uh, taken for two functions uh, at a time then uh, for 
first function. Therein, its codomain should, uh, whatever is the codomain of the first function should be the domain of the second function, then only it will be meaningful. So now let us, uh, so that way it is different, but uh, see, we can still construct this set. I repeat it and it is an important point that uh, we can still construct a set uh, like uh, if we make A and B both same then all this function defined like in this particular manner there in C composition will become A operation so that's the difference in a restricted manner but in a broader look composition is quite different from uh, operation uh, in a sense that it, it is in a restricted manner, the composition is in a restricted manner uh, and the, what that restriction is that the co-domain of the first function should be equal to the, uh, should be same as the, the domain of the second uh, uh, function whose composition we are finding. Now, so let us come to this definition. Suppose f is a function from a to b Obviously, A is the domain here and B is the codomain and G is the another function from B to C. Then, we define the composition of two functions and symbolically write it G O F. G O F A. G O F A. Uh, in this particular manner, that uh, first we will take the image under the F A function, this image will come somewhere in the codomain B and then whatever the image is obtained uh, under the F function, then again you find its image under the G function. So this is how you define it. Now mind it that G composition F is again a function. Now when we say that G O F is a function, then we ought to tell that uh, what is the domain of GUF, that is the composition function, and what is the codomain of it. So I tell you that GUF function will be from A to C. From A to C. Okay. So GUF is a function from A to C and defined in this particular manner. And defined and defined as GUF. A is equal to G F A. So this is how the composition of two function is defined. Now we take certain example to clarify the things, but uh, here see some important things I would like to tell you here. That uh, uh, let us explain uh, it through pictorially. Suppose f is a function from this is set a this is set b this is set c these are the non empty sets and f is a function from uh, a to b and g is a function from b to c i am writing here f is a function two dots f is a function from a to b g is a function from b to c then as i said g o f is again a function and defined from where to here? From A to C. And in what manner? We have already said that G O F A will be equal to first you will find the element under F A. So suppose these are the elements, A is some element here. And its image will be lying over here. Because see, it is a function. Each element of domain will have an image in the core domain. So F A. And then the image of this image will be obtained here in the C set. So G F A, G F A. This is how your G O F function will be defined. G O F function will be defined in this particular manner. Where what is A? A is any arbitrary element of your set A. So the domain of G O F function is what A, and uh, this. Uh, uh, codomain of GF function is set C. This intermediate uh, set B, which happens to be the codomain of the first function and domain of the second function G, that gets skipped out. Okay. Now, here see, 
uh, as I said, that uh, you know that uh, in a function, uh, function is a relation, and in relation you know that the second element is said to be the image of first function, uh, of first element. Uh, so the image of A is what? FA. Now FA will be element of your set B. Its image is obtained in set C. So what its image will be? G and within brackets FA. Because FA is the element of now B. FA is the element of set B. Uh, now, uh, so in a nutshell, through this composition function, what we are tr trying to obtain is image of the image. First image is obtained under this first function, which is better known as internal function, for the obvious reason that first we are trying to obtain the image of the GOF function, that is the composition function by F, and later on the image of image. Uh, as obtained from the first function, first function is obtained through the uh, second function, which is obviously then known as external function. So, my name in this uh, uh, the, uh, this G O F A G F A it should be uh, this F uh, A is the image. This is known as internal function. And so, first you obtain the image under internal function F, uh, and then by the external function G. So the terminology is by and large uh, clear because first we have to obtain the image under first function which is better known as internal function and then later on we are trying to find the image under the uh, second function which uh, is referred as external function. So this is one uh, the terminology which we shall be frequently using it. Now I take one good example here so that uh, things become more clear to you as far as this uh, composition of function is there. Suppose I take an example here. Suppose I define this is my R and uh, I define my function to be x square plus 3 whole square. First function this is again R and okay, let all the three functions be same. Let F. F is a function uh, defined from R to R. A what way? Fx is equal to say x square plus 1. Uh, it is x square plus 3 whole square. Now, second function is again from R to R and uh, it is like uh, under root ok let me take Y Y will X here will be the element of this set and Y will be the element of this set so let it be Y under root of under root Y minus 3 ok let's see what we get what is GOF then? GOF. Okay, let me write now. GOF A. So GOF A will be G and F A. And F A will be what? A square plus 3 whole square. And under this G, let us see what the image is comes out to be. So here in the G function, wherever Y is coming, that has to be replaced by this whole lot because this is our now element of our domain. So if you treat it to be T, T then it will be under root uh, of under root T minus 3. So here see, we see that this Y will be acquiring this whole lot of value, whatever is written here. So simply what, where Y is you are getting. Then uh, you replace this entire term, this entire expression uh, at place of y, then only see you will get the image. So let us see what will we get. So it is under root, under root y. At place of y, how much I am going to write? a square plus 3 whole square minus 3. So what it will give me under root? Under root a square plus 3 whole square, it is nothing but a square plus 3 minus 3. 
3 3 goes under root a square, so it is a. So this is how you would be obtaining the uh, images under the GUF function. See, the question would have been more interesting. If I would have given you the first function like x square plus 3 whole square, and uh, I would have asked you, then do tell me what is the function gy so that gof becomes an identity function. gof becomes an identity uh, function. Because here, see, gof is turning out to be uh, identi uh, identity function. Image of gof a, a is what? Any arbitrary element of your this first set. So that question would have been more interesting, but since we are at the beginning stage, so I took it deliberately to, uh, in a manner so that uh, you can understand the things in a better manner. As a matter of fact, I really wanted to tell you that here you will have these types of expression, but please don't get uh, confused by it. In the second function, G function, wherever I see uh, this, uh, see I could have well written G, Y, instead of G, Y, I could have well written to be X this thing, this way, or T, whatever I feel like. And then see, remember, so this entire lot has to be substituted at place of X. Then only you will get the correct images. So with this understanding, uh, rest all is uh, quite simple. Uh, we will take a few good examples later on, but uh, then we need to understand some few more things regarding this uh, uh, so next we proceed here uh, to taking some very good results about this uh, function of functions. Uh, especially these results are good one and uh, they will be uh, there for proving these results. See, we will employ one of the powerful methods of uh, uh, this uh, mathematics and that is the contradiction method. See, this uh, will come to our rescue in most of the results which we are now uh, on going to uh, direct here. Uh, okay, so now, the first result which we will prove is here, if f is a function from say x to y, x to y, it is a function and uh, g is a function from y to z, and both individually are one one functions. Then we have to prove that the composition function will also be one one. So what I'm given? So given is f x to y is injective, is injective or one one, and g y to z is also injective. To prove to prove GOF function and GOF function will be from where to where? It will be from X to Z is also 1, 1, is also 1, 1 or injective. Injective or 1, 1, they are same thing, they are same thing. Proof. Now proof as I said will be given through contradiction method. So now see what we have to prove the GOF of a composition map function. Uh, see for function there is another term also mapping. So at times see if I use the term mapping then please take it for function only. Now see if, if you want to prove the result GOF is 1 1. So let us take the contrary. Suppose GOF is not 1 and let us see what it happens. So if so let GOF be many one. If it is not one one, then what it will be? It will be many one. Okay. Many one implies what? Many one implies that there will exist two elements in the domain, two distinct elements in the domain, which shall be having the same images in the codomain. Uh, and these elements will be distinct. This implies there exists x1, x2 element in capital X such that fx1 is equal to fx2 uh, 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 but x1 is not equal to x2. Say this result is 1 and x1 
next two that uh, are the, obviously the element of the way. Now, how to contradict it? Now, see, let us see how. When we are assuming this thing, that is, if uh, uh, we are assuming, suppose, G O F to be minimal, then uh, uh, sorry, it, it should be. Uh, if let let G O F be minimal, so it is not F X one. It is G O F X one. G O F X one is equal to Z O F. Please, please make a correction here. It is, it should be you have assumed G O F. So G O F X one is equal to G O F X two. This implies X one is not equal to X two. Okay. Now, how 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 to contradict this thing? So this, this let us see. So now now please now consider consider G O F X one. Uh, now okay. Not consider. Now let G O F X one is equal to G O F X two. Okay. Now G O F X one is equal to G O F X two. This implies what? This implies because G is one one. It has been given both F and G. They are one one. So this implies F X one is equal to F X two. F X one is equal to F X two. Okay. Ah, uh, because G O F X one is equal to G O F X two. Uh, therefore, it will imply that, uh, and G O F is a one one. Uh, no, G is uh, sorry, uh, sorry, very sorry. Here, from this here, yes, we can safely re re reduce the F X one is equal to F X two for the simple reason that G is a one one function. It has been given. So whenever a function is one one, then what happens? If this thing is equal to this thing, then this f x one ought to be equal to f x two. Now, so here we see, please write g is one one. G is one one. Okay. Now, by the same reasoning, f is also one one. So this implies x one is equal to x two. Here, reason is f is also one one. It is given. So now see from here to here. If you are assuming that g o f x one is equal to g o f x two, then you are proving that x one is equal to x two. Say this is result two, result two. So result two, rather you can write. So when g o f x one is equal to g o f x two, so what we have shown, this implies that x one is equal to x two. Take this to be the second result. Now please see, this is direct in contradiction to the first result because here you are assuming. That there doesn't exist any two x one x two such that g o f x one is equal to g o f x two. Then x one is not equal to x two. So see, and here what you are showing that yes, these two are equal. G o f x one is equal to g o f x two, and you are further showing that x one is equal to x two. So this is a contradiction. So this is a contradiction. So it means that whatever you have assumed there earlier, that g o f is many one, this cannot happen. Because if this is happening, then you are reaching a contradiction, and as such, the proof is complete. And as such, the proof is complete. This is a contradiction. Please write. Right? This is a contradiction. So your uh, assumption that uh, G O F is many one is not correct. As such, G O F will always be one one, provided F and G are one one. Now on the same lines now. See uh, what you will prove in the next result is that uh, you will be given that f is a onto function, g is a onto function, and you have to prove that g o f will also be a onto function. G o f will also be a onto function. This will be the result second. Okay, so result two. Right now, result two. These are the interesting results. So what is given? F x to one is on to is on to function, and g y to z is also on to. That is surjective. Either you say on to or you say surjective. That amount to the same thing. And what do you have to prove? To prove, to prove 
get this composition function, G wave function. G wave function from where to where? It will be from x to z is also on 2, is also on 2. This is the result which you want to prove. Now, how to prove it? Again, as I said, that this uh, contradiction method is a powerful method for proving the result in mathematics. And we will employ the same uh, contradiction method theory to prove that yes, g of f is uh, actually a onto function provided both f and g individually are onto functions. Okay, so proof. Proof, assume, assume the contrary that assume g of f is into function. If it is not, is into function. Into function. This implies what? This implies that there exists uh, some element in the J. The, at least one element will certainly exist in the Z set which is not the image of any element under G O F under the composition function. That is to say, there exists an element, an element, an element where Z naught belonging to J such that G O F uh, and uh, small x is not equal to Z naught for every uh, x belonging to capital X because function is you have taken to be into. Into definitely means what? Existence of at least one element. There could be many more, but at least one element could will certainly exist. There well, now it can be the case that there are a few other elements also. But at least one element should uh, certainly exist, which is not the image of any element of uh, 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 of any element of the domain here. Okay. So how to prove it? Now, see. Now, but how to show it? We see. Now here, so you are claiming that Z not is not the uh, Z not is some element here which is not the image of any element in the capital X set of uh, that is of in the domain of G U F mapping. Okay. Now G is on two. G has been given on two. So in this set, Y set, capital Y set, certainly there will exist the element Y not. So now. Since G is on to, please see, since G is on to, G is on to, this implies there exists Y naught element of capital set Y such that uh, G Y naught is equal to Z naught. This is one result, okay? This is one, let it be two. G Y naught is equal to Z naught. And so here G Y naught one element will certainly exist here. Whose image will be this element Z not if at all G function is a onto function. Now, with this, uh, now likewise here. Since F is also onto, since F is also onto, this implies there exists one X naught is the element of X such that. Uh, f x naught is equal to y naught. This is 3. Putting this value here at place of y naught, putting the value of, uh, of 3 into what we get is g and at place of y naught how much I am going to put? f x naught. f x naught is equal to z naught. And see this is the result 4 which is in direct contravention to your first result. Because in the first result, what you were assuming, there hardly exists any element in the capital X set, that is the domain of GUS, which, who, which is, uh, whose image is Z0. This is what it says. But here you have shown, yes, there is an element X0, uh, whose uh, image under GUF function is equal to Z0. So you are reaching a contradiction. Uh, and as such, uh, the, the result which you have assumed that GUF is, is into is incorrect is incorrect so this, this will not happen and as such geo if f is on to g is on to then gof ought to be on to so this was the second reason now see we will come to their converses their converses see this converse part is uh, good results uh, 
so we I derive the third result here. Third result here, what it has to say that of course he these are the so what is given now here of course he is given is x is a function from x to y. G is a function from y to z and uh, of course g o x which is of course a function from x to z is say injective 1 1 is 1 1 then you have to tell about the one oneness of these component functions that is will f will it f be fun, uh, one one will g be one one both will be one one or both will not be one one or any one of them is one one this result you have to derive okay now see uh, one thing we we can very easily prove is that uh, here see if g is not one one g is not 1 1 then also we can show that gof is 1 1 and it is it's very simple to show it uh, 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 i will show it here for your convenience separately these are my set respective set x y z now here two elements show uh, okay three elements i am taking here and again two elements here now this element goes to this one image of this element goes to this one Say this is a1, this is a2. Here see it is uh, y1, y2, y3, three elements here, and here let it be z1 and z2. Z1 and z2. Okay, let, let a2 go to uh, let let these be also written as x1 and x2. X2, two elements. In the capital X set, namely x1, x2, three elements in this set and uh, two elements z1, z2 in the set z. And this is the uh, image, uh, this is the this thing. See, obviously, g o f x1 is what? z1. Here, see, g o f x1, it is easy to see that the image of x1 is what? g of y1 and g y1 is nothing but z1. Likewise, g o f x2 is nothing but uh, a g y2 and g y2 is z2. It is pretty obvious. Now see, and then see uh, what we are taking it like this. These are respective results. Here see, obviously, uh, here g is not 1 1 because y2 and y3, they are having the same images. But it's still g o f x1 is z1, g o f x2 is z2, there are only two elements, both the elements, uh, so what we are, we are noticing is that both these images are distinct and as such this mapping is obviously uh, one one mapping. So, uh, now uh, we, what we will show, uh, so at least see one result we can show that uh, one oneness of g is not essential for uh, GOF to be 1 1. So if GOF is 1 1, then we still, it, 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 we, so what is there is G can be 1 1, G can be many 1. G can be many 1. So that, that was the purpose of showing this result. But now what we are going to prove in the next result is that if at all GOF is 1 1, then we will show that F map function has to be 1 1 f function has to be 1 1 so this result we will prove right now this result we will prove now right now the whole part so one important result which we have established right now is that uh, if uh, f is a fun uh, function from x to y g is a function from y to y, uh, z and g o f is uh, 1 1 this has been given so what we have shown is that uh, g may be 1 1 g may not be 1 so this is uh, one result. Now what we will show that if for but if G F is one one, then F ought to be one one. So now what, what this now what we are going to show is that F has to be one one to to show now to show F is one one. Given is what G O F is one. Okay, proof again as I said. Continue. If F is not 
नॉट वन वन तो लेट एफ बी मैनी वन एफ बी मैनी वन एज्यूम द क्वांटिटी मैनी वन इंप्लाइज देयर एग्जिस्ट एक्स वन एक्स टू बिलोंगिंग टू एक्स सच दैट सच दैट एफ एक्स वन इज इक्वल टू एफ एक्स टू बट एक्स वन इज नॉट इक्वल टू एक्स टू This is result one. This is result one. So as as in uh, if as in many one, then at least two elements will certainly exist in the domain of S, whose images are C, and these two elements are this thing. So this is what we have written in uh, one. Now see, uh, we will show that uh, yes, uh, uh, this will lead to a contradiction somehow. If we can. Show it, then our result will be proved. Okay. Now please see. Since right now, since f x one is equal to f x two, both of them are here. f x one is will be uh, f x one will be here. It is image of x one, image of x two. They are same. This is also f x one, and this element will also be the element f x two. Both of them will be this element will be f x one and this will be this thing. But here x one and x two will be this thing. This is what it is saying. Now since f x one is equal to f x two, so image of this element under G function will be seen. So G uh, o G f x one will be equal to G f x two. That since these f x one f x two are element in uh, the domain of G. So they are one element only. So obviously their images under G function will be same. Okay. Now this will be what? G O F X one is equal to G O F X two. But G O F has been given to be one one. It is given. So if what does it mean? G O F X one. It means this implies uh, X one is equal to X two. So f x one is equal to f x two. Here, what we are showing that x one is equal to x two. Whereas, what the in one says that f x one is equal to x two. Uh, this thing uh, uh, f is one one. f x one is equal to f x two. Uh, that x one is not equal to x two. So now we see what we are we shown is that if f x one is equal to f x two. Then we are showing that x one is still equal to x two. So this is in contradiction. This result two is in contradiction to one, and as such, our assumption that f b uh, many one is not correct. So remember that f ought to be one one. If at all g o f is one one, then f come necessarily had to be one one. There is no such restriction is there on the z. So this completes the proof. Uh, this is the converse of that thing. Now we, we will prove the fourth result here, and the fourth result here, interestingly, will be the same here. That this time, what will be given to you? This time, given will be that G O F, this composition function is an onto function. So I am right taking the result four. Uh, again, see, uh, let me redraw it. Uh, this is my Capital X set. This is my capital Y set. This is my capital Z set. G function is defined from Y to Z. F is defined from this thing. So F is a function from X to Y as usual. Z is a function from Y to Z, and G O F is a function from X to Z. And given is that G O F. Is G O F, and then I can write X here is one one in Z uh, is onto subjective is onto or subjective whatever you feel like you can write. Then we have to tell uh, that whether F uh, we have to tell whether F and G will they be also onto or not. So one can see we can easily show. That here, uh, f, even if f is not onto, we will show 
that uh, we will show that if f is into even then g o f will be on to. How we can show it? Please see. I am taking this example here. This is my set x. This is my y. This is my z. I wish that. Uh, so let me mark it. Suppose this is some element here. Its image is here. Its image is here. Okay. Second element. Its image is here. Its image is here. Okay. Now uh, we have to show that uh, uh, this uh, uh, f uh, may be into also. Okay. Uh, so f may be into also. G. Okay. So uh, what I need to do? Okay. Let me take uh, one more element. Which is let these elements be x1, x2. This, these two elements be y1, y2, y3, and uh, this be z1, z2. Please see. Here, what is happening? F is in because there is still one element is here. And uh, let me draw like this here. Okay. Now see here, f is what? F is a into mapping because F y3 is uh, an element here which is not the image of any element of the domain. So F is definitely into this uh, G is onto and uh, G O F is also onto because G O F x1 is what? Z1. Obviously one can see it. Its image is y1, y1 is z1. So what we are finding is G O F x1 is equal to z1 and G O F x2 is equal to z2. Two elements only, both the elements are the images of uh, 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 one element here in. Uh, so it is GOF is a onto function. So, what was the point which we are trying to make it up is that uh, G, this function f, this function f may be onto or in, uh, into, that still GOF can be onto function. Still GOF can be onto function. But then what we will show that if G O F is on to, then G necessarily have to be on to. This is the result which we will now prove here. That if G O F is on to, then G necessarily ought to be on to. If G is into, then of course see uh, the result will fail. The result will not hold good. Will not hold good. So now what is given is given is G O F, G O F is on to, G O F is on to. To prove, to prove G is on to. So, proof. So, again, same thing, contradiction. Let G be into, G be into function. And G is a function from this thing. It means there will exist one element. This implies what? There exists at least one element where in the codomain of G there is this gem not belonging to J such that uh, G gem not G uh, sorry Y will not be equal to Z not for every Y belonging to capital Y. Means uh, there will exist the element Z not over here. Which will not be the image of any element here in your y set. In your y set. This is what I have written and let this result be 1. Okay. Now see, uh, we will prove the result. We know, we know, we know that GOF is on to. GOF is on to. GOF is mapping from x to z. This implies there exists x naught capital X such that G O F and this x naught is this is small x naught it is is equal to z naught implying that G F X naught F X naught is equal to z naught now F X naught is there F X naught is the element of set Y F X naught See, there exists the element x0 whose image will be what fx0, fx0, and the image of fx0 will be what? The z0 image, the same element which you are looking for. 
So see what this is the second reason and what we are showing. Yes, there do exist some elements. What now we have shown is that in this set Y there is existing element fx naught whose uh, fx naught whose image is j naught whose image is j naught whereas one demands what in one we are showing that there does, doesn't exist any element in the y set whose image is j naught so it, again you have reached a contradiction and as such our uh, proposition pro gets proved that is for if g f is on to then g necessarily ought to be uh, on to so this is uh, what the fourth important result which we had to uh, which we have established now after this uh, result uh, we will take uh, some uh, okay uh, invertibility this is another important topic invertibility invertibility very important topic and has got immense application in the problem. Now, here, see, first let us understand the definition. Uh, here, uh, before I take invertibility, I would like to refresh you with the definition of the identity function. A identity function is a function from same set to same set such that fx is equal, let a be the sum set, then fa will always be equal to a. Uh, that is to say the image of each element of the domain is the element itself. So and we represent it by i if uh, f is a function from a to a then i sub this thing a is meant for denoting the identity function on the set a and identity function on f a will be what? f a is equal to a. This is how identity function will be defined. So this all we have read in class 11, so we will not dwell into the details here. It is to be taken that you know this thing, uh, the concept of identity function. Now I define this uh, invertibility. So if f is a function, if f is a function, say from x to y, please uh, mind. This has been given if f is a function. And if there exists another function, and if there exists another function, this time from where to where? If f is a function from x to y, then what we further say is that if there exists a function from y to x, we see from set y to x, such that g o f, g o f x is equal to ix and f o g y is equal to i y. So uh, first uh, let me write it. If f x to y is a function, is a function and there exists, there exists another function, another function say g say g from where to where from y to x such that such that what should happen g o f g o f now g o f will be a function from where to where pc it will be a function from x to x x to x pc uh, from uh, I will explain it later on. G O F is equal to I X, that is the identity function, and and F O G F O G is uh, your I Y. That is identity map on Y. So first, let us see G O F. F is a function from where to where? P C. F is a function from X to Y, and uh, G is a function from where to where? From Y to X. So, G, uh, GOF function, GOF function will be from where to where? GOF function will be from X to X. Likewise, we can easily show that uh, FOG function, PC, FOG function where F, now see FOG, in FOG, 
What is the internal function g? So first we will write g function here. It is y to x. Please see, g is from y to x and uh, f is from x to y. So now we see f o g function. f o g function will be from where to where? From y to y. Please see, f o g first you will go under g. So from y you went to x and then see you will go from x to y. So eventually you will get from y to y. So see, one thing which you need to make sure is that first where g o f will go and from where f o g will go. So this aspect is okay and uh, uh, so let us revisit the definition once again here. So what it says that if f is a function from x to y and, then, and if there exists another function from y to x, say call it g, such that g o f is, is the identity function on x uh, on your set x and f o g is the identity function of y. Then we say that uh, inverse of f exists. Inverse of f exists. Then we say. Then we say f has inverse. F has inverse. And symbolically we denote it by. And symbolically it is denoted as. It is denoted as f inverse. F inverse. So here in this case, your G map will be your inverse fu uh, function of F. Inverse function of F. So I, I think things are very clear. Once again, I, I revisit uh, quickly. If F is a function from X to Y, then we say that it is invertible. If there exists a function from Y to X, mind it, F was from X to Y, then it has to be from the other side. Then there exists, and if there exists a function uh, g from y to x such that g o f is identity function on your set x and f o g is identity function of i y, then you say that the inverse of f exists and this is denoted by f inverse. Now, we will do an important result. With this definition, now a very important result has to be proved and that result is uh, that if, uh, of course, see if f x to y is the function, then this, then it says f is invertible, f is invertible if and only if both ways, both ways, f is bijective. Bijective means 1, 1, and on 2. 1, 1, and on 2. So this is it now. This is a very important result of far reaching. Uh, applications. So we will prove this result and uh, so first let us go this way, this side because both ways we have to prove. Initially we will assume that f is invertible and we will prove that f is uh, 1 1 on 2, bijective means 1 1 on 2. So uh, let us uh, see. So what is now given? So given is f is invertible. f is invertible means there exists a function f inverse such that uh, f inverse o f is i x and uh, f o f inverse is i y. And to prove, to prove, initially we will prove that f is uh, 1 1 and then we will prove f is on 2. So first we prove f is 1 1, 1 1 or injective, injective. Okay, proof. So you assume the contrary. Assume the contrary, that is, assume contrary, that is, F B many one. F B many one. Okay. Now, if F is many one, then what will happen? Please see. If, uh, because see, here it has been given that. Uh, f is uh, 1 uh, invertible. That is point has been given and you have to show that f is 1 1. So you are assuming the quantity that f be many 1. So f is many 1, what does it mean? It means this implies there exists x1, x2, two distinct elements in x such that fx1 is equal to fx2 okay and uh, x, but x1 is not equal to x2 x1 is not equal to x2, this is the one result. 
this is the one result which of course is a pretty obvious because if it is many one then at least at least two element i repeat at least two element will uh, exist it will have the same images there could be many more there could be many more but at least two uh, element will certainly exist we shall be having the same image and this is what we are writing okay so what will happen please see x is invertible okay so fx1 is equal to fx2 this is the now let fx1 is equal to fx2 so what is in place now since f is invertible that is given so f inverse o f x1 is equal to f inverse o f x2 uh, we are taking uh, rather don't write like this better write now this fx1 fx2 where the elements will be they will be the set y so what we will take now f inverse fx1 and uh, so this will be equal to f inverse fx2 and obviously this is what this is what f inverse of this is what f inverse of x1 and this is what f inverse of x2 and this implies x1 is equal to x2 because function is invertible it is given so here you get this result so whatever when we have given fx1 is equal to fx2 you are showing uh, that x1 is equal to x2 which is in direct contravention contravention to your result 1 to your result 1 and as such assuming this uh, result uh, that uh, uh, this uh, f is many one cannot happen because if you are assuming this thing you are coming to a contradiction and as such see if f is invertible then f ought to be 1 1 now we will prove that uh, if f is uh, this if f is invertible then we have to show the other part also and what is the other part we have shown f is by we have to show f is by that that is f is 1 1 and on to so now on to part we will prove so f is invertible given to prove f is on to or is on to prove um, again by contradiction method let f be into let f be into this implies this implies what there exists the element y not here which won't be the image of any element in x so this implies there exists at least one element will certainly exist there could be many more there exists uh, y not one element in the set y such that fx is not equal to y not for every y for every x sorry for every x belonging to capital x and this is your first result see if f is uh, uh, into then of course the existence of at least one element y not in the set y will certainly be there that is to say that this uh, y not will not be the image of any element of your the domain of x that is in x and this is what it is written there is y not uh, y uh, in element of y such that fx is not equal to y not for every x for every x belonging to x not okay now we have to show that uh, yes uh, uh, we we have to reach a contradiction okay now since f is invertible f inverse exists f inverse exists and f inverse will be from here to there from y to z okay now since uh, it is a function from uh, sorry y to x it is y to x this is by what this is by and why not is the element of uh, y so f inverse y not uh, will be uh, it, it will have a image because f inverse is a function from y to x so we call it f inverse y is equal to say x uh, dash uh, f x dash is some element there f x dash is some element of capital x okay now function is invertible so what you will get f take the f inverse y not is equal to f x dash now this is what this is y not 
is equal to fx dash. So now see what we have shown that there exists x dash element in x whose image is y0. And here you are saying that there doesn't exist any element in x whose image is equal to y0. So this shows a contradiction. So f ought to be on to also. So earlier we have shown that f is 1, 1. Now we have shown f is on, on to. So both the result is sufficient as such. One side of this important theorem that if f is invertible, then f is to be by the two. The, this side has been shown. Now we will prove the other side. For proving the other side, uh, okay, what we will assume? This time we will assume that f is bisective, f is 1, 1, on 2. Okay, so now we will give the proof this side. So given is what now? f is bisective, f is bisective. And what we have to show? To show, to show, yes, f is invertible. Invertible, invertibility, invertible, invertibility demands a lot that uh, there exists uh, a mapping from y to z. And of course, see, f is from x to y. Then, invertibility demands what? That there exists a function from y to x such that, of course, uh, f inverse of f is uh, identity function on x and likewise uh, uh, f o f inverse is identity function on i. Okay, so f is invertible and we have, okay, f is invertible, yes, we have to show it. So now see, we will show, okay, we will define, define g a function from y to x such that such that fx is equal to y if and only if gy is equal to x. Okay, this is how we are defining gc. gy is equal to x provided fx is equal to y. So how we are defining? We, are, we have defined a g function. And g function obviously is from y to x. So gy is equal to x provided fx is equal to provided fx is equal to y. See, uh, since uh, function is 1, 1 on 2, bisective, uh, we, we can say this, say this thing. Because there won't be, uh, they will be having unique images. This thing we can easily establish. We can, this point has to be looked into. See, if function was not bisective, then see, there would have been many, then gy would have been having many images. Because if fx is equal to say y1, fx is equal to y2, if fx would have been many, many then gy1 would have been also equal to x and gy1 would have also been equal to y2. So implying that g is having multiple images and therefore g won't be a function. So this thing, this is a result which will be established only provided uh, f is a 1, 1 onto function. So we are safe to uh, derive this result. Now, with this, uh, once we have derived this result, we can prove it. This g will be our f inverse. How do we prove it? Okay. g o f, let us calculate. g o f x. g o f x will be what? Here, please see. It will be nothing but g f x. Now, if uh, f x uh, is equal to say y, so it will be z y and z y will be what? Again, uh, it will be x by definition by x. So g o f x is equal to x implying that implying this implies that g o f is nothing but identity mapping on the x function. Likewise the other part we can also show that f o g f o g uh, on y that is calculated f o g y because f o g will be a function from where to where from y to y. That you will understand, please see. Uh, this is a g function from y to x and f is from x to x. So g o, uh, now what f o g, f o g will be from there to here, for, for internal you will go y to x and x to x to y. So it will be eventually from f o g will be from there to there. So what it is? It is f g y 
and uh, as you have seen, gy if it is equal to x, so this is fx, and fx is equal to what? y. So implying that foG uh, is nothing but i y. So what you have shown that f, if f is bijective, then your function is invertible. Is your your function is uh, invertible? This is what we have exactly shown here. So uh, very easy. And but here, see the most important thing which you need to assume is this particular this thing that how you are defining your this inverse function g. This inverse function you can please define only mind it if f is a function from x, y, and f ought to be one one. These all should elements should have distinct images. Then only see you can say that if it is y one, if it is y two, y three. Then only see you can make a result that yes, g y two will be equal to x three, g y two oh, will be x two, g y one will be equal to x one. Images ought to be uh, distinct. That is one one function. It should be, and it should also need to be on two because if it, any of the element is left out, uh, if f is into say y four it is, then see g uh, y four will not be defined. G by 4 will not be defined. Therefore, the most important thing in this particular theorem is to make sure that yes, this uh, assumption which we are doing, this G, this inverse function which we are defining here, can be defined only provided uh, uh, this function f ought to be 1 1 on 2. So, this is uh, all what uh, an invertibility, this is the most uh, important theorem in this invertibility. And uh, in our this uh, uh, trigonometric inverse trigonometric function, this particular theorem will play a very important role. Will play a very important role. So uh, now here, see, I will take one question here. I will take one question here, and then I have I will prove two more very important result uh, here, so that uh, at least you can have some idea of this thing. And this is your question. Uh, from the book itself, I am taking it here, and it says question nine. It is a good one. It says that uh, if f is a function from where to where, from r plus these positive reals to minus five, closed from this side, infinity on the open, and is given by f x is equal to how much? It is nine x square plus six x minus five. So 3x square plus 2 into 3x. So I will be preferring to write it 3x plus 1 whole square and minus 6. Please see. Uh, I, I think it's okay. Yes. This thing can equivalently be written to be like this. So uh, yes. Now we have to show that this is an invertible function. It is an invertible function with inverse function also they have given. And inverse function is from minus 5 infinity to r plus and in and full f inverse y is nothing but under root y plus 6 minus 1 upon 3 upon 3 so what you have to show that uh, the function f defined therein is a invertible function and it is inverse is like this so very simple if at all this is the inverse see here it's uh, you need not to find the inverse what what the important thing you have to do is you have to simply show that this is the inverse. Uh, so what we need to do is that uh, yes, uh, I have a sip of water. Yes, what we will try to establish is yes, f inverse O f. We see f is from R plus to this set, so uh, it will be from uh, R plus to R plus. And uh, likewise, f o f inverse will be from where to there? It will be from minus 5 infinity open to minus 5 close on the other side and this. So this is obvious, pretty obvious. Uh, so I am rubbing it off and we will uh, get the result here like this. So now let us calculate, if uh, this is the inverse, then let us calculate f inverse o f. And we will show that it is nothing but uh, identity uh, function on R plus. Okay, so F inverse O F. Okay, let me take it from X. So this will fetch me what? 
F inverse Fx. F inverse Fx. And this will affect me what? Fx is what? You have 3x plus 1 whole square minus 6. See, see. So now F inverse, F inverse y is given this much. So now we see this at place of y, I will be substituting this entire lot. Please, so see, it will be what under root? y plus 6. So at place of y, how much I am going to write? 3x plus 1 whole square minus 6 at place of y. Plus 6, please see, plus 6 and whole upon 3. So 6 is those under root 3x plus 1 is what? 3x plus 1 whole square and uh, see minus 1 also here. Please see, under root y plus 6 at y uh, plus 6. So at place of this thing, I will write this thing. Uh, f inverse this thing plus 6 and then minus 1 also. Minus 1 also. So it will be 3x plus 1 uh, minus 1 upon 3. So 1 1 goes 3x, 3 x, 3 3 cancels and you will get x. So this is nothing but i is. Similarly, we can show that f o f inverse y. f o f inverse y is equal to f f inverse y and this is uh, what f inverse f of f inverse y f inverse y is this thing under root y plus 6 minus 1 by 3 so now this thing will be equal to what f of this thing what is f here f is 3 x plus 1 whole square minus 6 so please wherever y is coming there you substitute this entire 3 x plus 1 square so f uh, it will be under root y plus 6 so at place of y, how much we are going to write? 3x plus 1 whole square minus 6. At place of y, I will get this thing plus 6 outside minus 1 and whole upon 3. So this goes. This uh, 3x plus 1 whole square outside this square, it will be 3x plus 1 and then minus 1 upon 3. So eventually it will give you x only. So it will give you uh, uh, x only. So no, it's where f inverse y plus 6. So, y plus 6, okay. So, here what we have got y plus, just hold on, f inverse y. f inverse y, f inverse y is from here. It is under root y plus 6 minus 1 by 3, okay. And then see, uh, here at place of y, how much you are going to receive this much, so you are getting x. So here as a matter of fact, you should have got y. We we have fault it somewhere. Okay, let us do uh, again here. Let me have one ends. Okay, let me do it. Okay, uh, what we have to find now? F O F inverse. Okay, y. So this is nothing but F F inverse y. F inverse y, it has been defined like this. It is f of y. Y is under root of, so just let me see f inverse. F inverse will be from here to here. So it will go from here to here. Yes, it is fine. Uh, it should find y is here. So it will go from here. F inverse y will be your, okay, right now, f inverse y. It, you have defined like this. And fx has been defined in that way. Okay, so you you, you that we were right there everything. F inverse, f inverse by under root y plus 6 minus 1 by 3. Okay. And f of this whole thing is what? Uh, it is of course fetching you again if you put here at place of y3 experiment, so it is x. No, no. So uh, f for But why see? Okay, we will uh, check it, and uh, I, I think it's uh, absolutely correct. Uh, but it should have been given as y plus six f y plus six and I think f x. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, we got the mistake. It won't be x. We see it. Now what we need to do is here f x. Now we have to find the limit. So here at place of x, we will be substituting this whole lot. Okay, good. So see it was erroneous. 
So what we need to do is, it will be 3 at case of x, what we will substitute? Under root y plus 6 pc minus 1 upon 3, 3x, uh, this is 3x plus 1 and then this whole square minus 6. Yes, now, now it looks like okay. So 3, 3 goes and what we get, this 1, 1 goes and under root y plus 6 whole square we are getting here. So under root y plus 6 is given to yes, y plus 6 minus 6 and so it is y. Now it's okay. See, earlier we did a mistake. Please uh, make it a character. So, uh, yes. Yeah, uh, please see. At case of x, we will be putting this whole part because we have to obtain the image under f. So, this is how we will be doing it. Now, two more important results we will be deriving here. Uh, so, Associative property here. You see, the next result which we would be proving would be that uh, in this uh, composition function, if f is a function from say a, uh, x to y, okay, and uh, g is a function from y to z, and then x is a function from say z to s, three functions now. And uh, here see, it is x, it is y, it is z, it is uh, then again x. f is from x to y, this is from y to z, f g, and this is from h. Now we will show that here, uh, this h, o, g, here, this thing is equal to F O G composition F. These two are equal. That is associative property holds good here. Now please uh, mind it. First thing you need to show that this whole lot. This is a function from where to where. P C G O F. First P C G O F. This G O F will be from where to where. Under F, it will be from X to Z. Pretty obvious f x to y y to z to g y will be from here to here. And uh, let us calculate uh, now h operation g operation f. Now g operation f is from where to where. Please see it is from x to z. This is g operation f. x to z. And h operation h is from this thing. So h operation this will be from x to uh, x x to s h is from here to here this is your set s pc this is your set s so left hand side this side is a function from x set x to s so this is this way this is this way this left hand side is from x this thing so this is your h operation g operation x now let us see the right side in right side let us first calculate uh, okay, H O G. G is a fun now here internal function is G. So G is from where to where? Y to Z. Okay, and H is from Z to S. So it will be from Y to S. Okay, and uh, yes, now H O G, this right hand side, H O G O F. F is internal function here. So you are going from X to Y. And under H O G, you are going from Y to S. So eventually, where you are going? Because see, F you are going from here to here, X to Y. So internal function in H O G operation F. First you go for uh, internal function in F. So under F you are going from X to Y, X to Y, and then from Y to S. So eventually you are going from X to X to S. So both left hand side, right hand side. What we have shown that you are going from X to S. So this thing, this thing, they are giving you that you are going from X set to S set. Okay, and, uh, so let me write quickly here, H O 
G it was from G was from from Y to and uh, X. Now we will show that uh, the respective images are also same. So calculate left hand side. Calculate LHS. LHS is what? Okay, then H O. We have already shown that both of them are from X to S. So let it be X here. This whole lot. So this is will give us what H and first internal function is what U F. So H and then uh, okay G uh, X composition and then uh, you will find the image. Okay, first you take the image under G U F X. Okay, and then this thing is the image under H. Now this internal here what you are getting here it is F X again a function of function and this is G. This is G F X. So this is what right hand side. Left hand side, let us calculate. Uh, sorry, this is left hand side. Let us calculate right hand side. It is H O G O F O F. Again, we have shown earlier that it is again from X to S. So see if you know this thing. So here internal function is what H O G and uh, this thing first you will take under fx and then under hog function and under hog function what you will do first you will take under gfx gfx and then this under external function h and this is uh, again the right hand side obviously left hand side and right hand side are same therefore we have proved the associative law as far as composition of function is concerned uh, and mind it that these functions ought to be uh, fashioned in a manner so that this all they, they, they make sense that SGF they make sense because this is what composition is all about and then see the point is that any two of them you can take uh, at one place and then uh, uh, this thing where it first you uh, take under F and then under H. Here what you are doing you are taking first under UF uh, being the internal function and then with the H. Both ways you are getting the same thing. Both ways you are getting the same thing. So associative property holds good as far as composition of function is concerned. Now we will prove one last theorem here and that is uh, finding the inverse of uh, a composition function. So last theorem here is finding inverse Finding inverse of uh, GOF. GOF. F is a function from X to Y and uh, G is a function from Y to Z. Okay, that finding the inverse of GOF and we will show that this inverse is nothing but F inverse O G inverse. And F and G of course are invertible functions. F O G are both invertible functions. Uh, if F and G are both invertible functions, then G O F, the inverse of G O F, uh, will be equal to F inverse O G inverse. Let us see. Uh, first, let us uh, write G O F will be a function from here to here. G O F. Uh, first, see. Uh, let, let, let me write here all the function. F is from x to y. G is from y to z. Okay. F inverse will be from uh, y to x. G inverse will be from z to y. Now, G O F will be from where to where? G O F will be from x to z. Okay. And uh, F O G. F O G first under G uh, so Y to Z uh, G function is from uh, Y to Z and uh, then Y to X so it will be from Z to X Z to X G O F uh, F is from X to Y and then under G Y to Z to X to Z and uh, please see F O G F O G apart under G, so you will go from Y to Z, okay, and then under F, uh, under F it is from X to Z.
two y so something went wrong f o g f o g is not defined please see yes here see f o g is not defined wrong i have written wrong see f o g here it won't get defined for the simple reason f o g is what under g you will be going from y to z and then f is from x to y so this is not defined not defined okay good no issue so g o f is x to z so g o f inverse okay this whole inverse will be from where to where from z to from z to x okay and uh, one more thing see here let us see if where this f inverse f inverse operation g inverse goes g inverse g inverse goes from z to y please see in f inverse o z g inverse g inverse is from z to y and this is from y to x so this will go from z to y now see things are simple now g o f inverse is from z to x uh, and uh, this thing uh, g inverse is from please see it, it will be also from z to f inverse o g inverse g inverse is from z to where g inverse is from z to y and this is y to x so it is means y to x so please see that in here both the mappings are going from z to x from z to x both ways now uh, let us prove if they are inverse then what should happen if at all they are inverse then what should happen then we have been prove first if uh, that uh, f inverse o g inverse operation what g o what we should be please see uh, we have earlier seen now it is another thing but f inverse o as i said it will occur so g inverse o g o f o f see i have rubbed it uh, i shouldn't have because g is a mapping from uh, your y to z so g inverse will be a mapping from z to y likewise f is a mapping from x to y so f inverse is a mapping from y to these all things we will be using here so g inverse o z z operation y and y to z so it will be z so it is giving me what f inverse o i z and o uh, o f here i z this is z now what is f inverse p c uh uh f is uh, f inverse is from where to where p c it is from Uh, g inverse is from z to oh, g. Sorry, sorry, we have done a mistake. Please see again here the mistake. G inverse o g. G inverse o g. Here internal function is g. So y to z you are doing, and then from z to y. So it will be i y. Please see. Make a correction here. It is i y. Now please see. F inverse associative law holds good. So f inverse o i y. Let us clap together and then take f. So f inverse o i y. Let us see f inverse goes from where to where? From y to x. Okay. And here internal function is what i y. I y means y to y. So it will be nothing but f inverse. F o f. And f inverse o f is what we see. And the f inverse going x to y. So what it will be is giving you i x only. Because f inverse o f is uh, f is uh, is an invertible function. Here it was given to us, so uh, f inverse of f is i x. So one part is proved. Likewise, we can prove the other part. Uh, this is what we have proved. So this is on x. This whole lot x we have shown it to be identity function. Now we will show g o f o and f inverse o g inverse. Let us see this whole lot. What it is giving us? Is it giving us uh, i y? So f inverse o z inverse. First, let us see. Can we f inverse o z inverse? F inverse o z inverse. Uh, what it is? G inverse. G inverse is z to y. Okay. And this uh, g inverse and f inverse. F inverse is from y to x. So it will be from z to z to x. Okay. Z to y. Y to Uh, z to y and uh, y to x. So z to x, f inverse or z inverse. And uh, this, 
GOF, GOF. GOF is from where to where we see? First under F. So X2 by Y2 uh, and G and Y2 Z. So it is from X to Z. So it should give you what? IZ. It should give you IZ. Let us do it. So what it is uh, because of associative property, we can take like it, this thing. Now we are calculating it and we can take it like this. So it is G operation FOF inverse. FOF inverse. So uh, under F. So what it will be? Y to X, X to Y. So I Y. So G O I Y. O Z inverse. Now we can get I by F. Z O I Y. Let us take these two. Or you may associate it with this thing. It will give you the same result. Z O I Y. Z is from where to where? Uh, yes. Uh, it is I Y. First you will take internal. I Y. Y to Y. And then Y to Z. So it will be Z O Z inverse. And so Z O Z inverse is nothing because G is the invertible function. So it is nothing but uh, giving you what? Uh, G inverse. G inverse will be from Z to Y. And uh, G is from uh, Y to Z. So G O G inverse is nothing but I Z. So this completes the proof. These are all the important results uh, which we have derived as far as the strategy is concerned. And we will try a few uh, questions uh, in our this next uh, video. So thank you.